Single indicator trading signals are used to follow uptrends and downtrends or to lead price movement by identifying their momentum tendency of rising or falling prices to keep on doing so. Moving averages trading signals occur when there is a crossover among stock close prices and their moving average or between short-term and long-term moving averages. First we have price crossover type of trading signals, in which there is a buy signal if the previous close price was less than the corresponding simple moving average and then the current close price is greater than the corresponding simple moving average. On the other hand, we have a sell signal if the previous close price was greater than the simple moving average and then the current close price is less than the simple moving average. We also have double crossover type of trading signals, in which we have a buy signal if the previous short-term exponential moving average was less than the longer-term exponential moving average and then the current short-term exponential moving average is greater than the long-term exponential moving average. On the other hand, we have a sell signal if the previous short-term exponential moving average was greater than the long-term exponential moving average and then the current short-term exponential moving average is less than the long-term exponential moving average. Great, so let's go back into our Python PyCharm IDE so that we can study moving averages trading signals with greater detail. Excellent, so here we are back within our Python PyCharm IDE. In this lecture, we'll be working within simple moving average and exponential moving averages code files. If you have any questions about their setups, please go back to section one, stock technical analysis data lecture, where all of that explained with greater detail. So let's begin with simple moving average. As they are meant to be standalone type of files, first we import our packages, then we proceed to read our corresponding data, we calculate our technical indicator, which is our five-day simple moving average, but as mentioned in the corresponding lecture, these parameters are not fixed and you can modify them according to your needs. Then we do the corresponding chart, and then we're able to do this price crossover type of trading signals. First of all, we'll create columns with previous periods data. The reason for this is that we want to avoid backtesting bias. What that means is that whenever we visualize a trading signal, we'll implement it one day later. So we have within our SPY data frame, we create close minus one or previous periods closed. Same for SMA5 or our technical indicator. And we also create second previous periods with close minus two and the same with our simple moving average. The way to create each of this is within the same SPY, we search for the original data, such as this close prices. And for one day, we shift it one position and for two days, we ship them two. Once we have this data, we can proceed to generate our trading signals. This trading signals, buy is one, sell is minus one and do nothing equals zero. We create the corresponding column where we are going to store the corresponding signals. It's going to be named SMA5 sig and as you can see here, originally we only have zeros in this column, meaning do nothing. But we're also creating a variable with that same name as the column, initially with the value of zero, and we're going to use this variable within our for loop. So we have the for loop for i comma r in enumerate SPY iter rows. So basically it's going to iterate through all the rows within our data frame. Then we have the semicolons and we go into the first if conditional. And what we are asking is if our second previous period's close prices were less than that second previous period simple moving average and our previous period's close prices are greater than previous period simple moving average, then semicolons, we update SMA5 sig with one, which is a buy signal. If this is not the case, we enter the second if conditional, which is a nested if within the original if Therefore, it's named Aleph. And we are asking if our second previous period close price was greater than the second previous period simple moving average and our previous close price was less than the previous period simple moving average, 
semicolons, then our corresponding signal is updated to minus 1, which is a cell signal. If none of these two conditions is met, then we have else, in which our corresponding signal remains as zero, which is do nothing. In each of these loops, we'll be updating our original data frame with spy.iloc in the corresponding row of each of those four loops, i, and 11 is the column where we stored this variable we created before, which then will update with the values we obtain within the loop. Once we can calculate this, we can proceed to do our trading signals chart. In this case, it's going to be fig1, comma, AX for axis, which is equal to PLT dot subplots. And here we have two subplots that share the X axis as true. Therefore, on the first one, which is at the top and at position zero within the axis, we're going to plot close prices. Then we're going to plot the overlay, which is a five day simple moving average with their legend located at the upper left. Then on the first position, which is the subplot below, we're going to plot the corresponding signals. Their marker is an O, so it's a dotted type of chart, and line style is blank, so we don't want any lines connecting these corresponding dots. Then we're going to show the corresponding legend of this chart at the upper left, and then we're going to have a superior title for these two subplots, which is going to be SPY, Close Prices, and Simple Moving Average, SMA5. Next, we proceed to show the chart. So let's proceed to run the code. We click the right button on the mouse, scroll down into Run Simple Moving Average. In our previous section, we studied the corresponding technical indicator with the close prices in this corresponding chart, so we are just going to close it. So now we're going to focus on this chart, which is the one we just coded. So let's make it full size right here, it needs to be done manually because of the screencast, there we are all the way into the bottom. So here we have our chart, SPY close prices and simple moving averages, SMA 5-day type. Then at the top we have our corresponding prices on the vertical axis and the solid blue line is our close prices and the solid orange one corresponds to that 5-day simple moving average which is its corresponding smoothing. On the second chart we have our corresponding signals which are 1 is buy, 0 is do nothing, minus 1 is sell. And then both of them share the horizontal axis of dates from the beginning of 2016 to the beginning of 2017. So as we can see here, we have several trading signals, both in buy and sell. So let's focus to just one part of the chart by clicking here on the zoom, let's say this part right over here. Excellent. So for example, let's go and search for a sell signal. So one sell signal will be point wherever our close prices, which is the blue line, crosses below the orange one. And as we can see, it occurs right here and it's implemented one period later. Then let's observe a buy signal, such as the one in which the close prices cross from below to above the orange line, which is a simple moving average, and then it's implemented later on. That's our buy signal. So you can visualize all the corresponding signals. If you want to unzoom or go back to the original one, you just scroll back by clicking the arrow. Something very important as always, if you focus in the bottom left hand corner right here and then you go with your mouse on top of the lines, you'll see the precise coordinates within our plots. Excellent. So we're going to close this chart. Also, the next ones, we'll study this in greater detail in our following sections. So now let's go ahead and study those double crossovers, which are generated within exponential moving averages. So again, we have similar structure because these are meant to be standalone files. So first of all, we import our packages. Next is time to read our corresponding data. Then we calculate our technical indicators, and here we did the calculation of two exponential moving averages, 
shorter term one or fast one of five days, and longer term one or slow one of 21 days. Then we're going to calculate their corresponding double crossover trading signals. First, we do those previous periods data to avoid the backtesting bias. Again, as we saw in our previous technical indicator, our trading signals are implemented one day after we observe them. Then we generate those trading signals, buy equals one, sell minus one, and do nothing, which is zero. And in this case, we create the corresponding column, EMA SIG, which we are going to store all the corresponding trading signals by creating the variable inside our for loop. So in this case, within our if conditionals, we are going to ask if our second previous period's exponential moving average of five days is less than that second previous period's exponential moving average of 21 days and that previous period's exponential moving average of five days is greater than the previous periods, 21 days exponential moving averages, then the signal is one or a buy signal. If it's not the case, we enter that second conditional, which is nested within the original one, and we're asking if our second previous period's five-day exponential moving average was greater than the second previous period's 21 days exponential moving average, and previous periods, five day exponential moving average is less than the 21 days exponential moving average of previous periods, then we have a signal minus one, which is a cell. If we don't have either of this, then we remain with zero, which is do nothing. In each of the loops within the four, we are updating our corresponding variable, which we create above inside the column. Excellent. So then we do our corresponding chart here in which we have two subplots that share the X or horizontal axis as true. In the first one of them, we have close with the two overlays, five and 21 days exponential moving averages. Their legend located at the upper left. And then we have the corresponding chart with those trading signals with a marker of dots and there's a blank line style, so there's no line connecting the dots. Also, the legend at the upper left and the corresponding title, SPY close prices and exponential moving averages, EMA 5 and 21 days, and we show the chart. Excellent. So let's proceed to run the code by clicking the right button on the mouse and then scrolling down into run exponential moving average. The first chart is the one we studied in a previous section in which we visualize close prices in solid blue, then the short term exponential moving average in orange, and then the longer term one in green. So let's just close this chart and focus with the one we just coded. So again, we're going to make this chart full screen and we need to do it manually because of the screencast right over here, all the way to the end and all the way into the bottom. Perfect. So here we have SPY close prices and exponential moving averages, EMA 5 and 21 days. On the top chart, we have our corresponding prices. The solid blue line corresponds to close prices, the solid orange one to the shorter term or five day exponential moving average, and the solid green one to the longer term or 21 days exponential moving average. On the second subplot, we have our trading signals. One is buy, zero do nothing, minus one is sell. These two share the horizontal axis of dates, beginning at the beginning of 2016, all the way into the beginning of 2017. So again, let's zoom in to an area with several of our trading signals, such as this one right over here, so that we can observe how the trading signals work. Something very important. In this case, we are comparing the corresponding moving averages. Therefore, such as this signal, which is a buy signal, we see clearly the shorter term moving average or the orange solid line crossing from below to above the green one, which is the longer term one. Therefore, we have the corresponding buy signal. Then we want to observe a point which we have the opposite, such as this case right over here, in which we see the orange line, which was above or the shorter term moving average, going from above to below 
the green line which is the longer term one and we see the corresponding cell signal being implemented one day later. As always if you focus on the bottom left hand corner and you use your mouse you see the precise values for your trading signals. Excellent. So we're going to close this chart, also this one, and the last one, which we'll study in greater detail in following sections. So now that we finish with the first of our single indicator-based trading signals through moving averages, simple and exponential moving averages, it's now time to continue with single indicator-based trading strategies, but in this case, we'll study Bollinger Bands, right over here, and next, Parabolic Stop and Reverse, so that we close with single indicator and lagging type of indicators, and those will be our following objectives.